Hello and welcome to the Being Human podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Bataro, and as promised, this week I am opening up my interior psyche. You get to see some of the parts in there that we started talking about with Dr. Peter Malinowski in the last episode, in episode 35. That was the last week's episode. We began this interview, and here's the second part. So in the beginning, we were talking about just basically what is this new system of understanding our psyche. And I've been breaking this open little by little in the past few episodes, talking about how as we are creating the image of God, we have a unity to our identity. And then there's also this kind of multiplicity, these multiple parts that we find within ourself. Mm -hmm. And we've been breaking open exactly how to make sense of that how that has an effect in the work that we do in psychology, how we can actually find great freedom by bringing compassion and love to all the different parts that we find within ourselves. So last week we did a lot of the talking and then we're going right into an experiential exercise where I am going to open up how this is something I experience and, and it's also something you can join in yourself. So, Without any more delay, I hope you enjoy this, and it's a blessing to you as much as it was for me. God bless you. My name is Dr. Greg Bataro, and I want to welcome you to the Being Human podcast. Are you interested in like doing some internal work you think your audience would like to kind of get into? I this? think so. I, I think you it's going to be a great way to drive this home even further, to get into some nitty gritty. All right. And, uh, uh, and actually open this up a little bit. So. <laughs> well, I love to do on the podcast, on the podcast that I do. And then also in these communities, I do a lot of experiential exercises because there is something to going and seeing, right? Um, mm. You know, that was the response, right? Of, of Nathaniel, come and see, right? <laughs> we found right. the Lord, come and see. You can't, I can't explain it to you, right? And this is stuff that can be done uh, in, a, in a forum like this. So I'm going to invite people to do a little exercise with me to connect with a part, right? To, to kind of say, okay, because a lot of people are like, what's a part, right? And they might read about it or they might, you know, hear about it. And it's like, when you start to be able to relate with your own parts, that's a whole different experience. Like imagine, Greg, you and I are psychologists, right? So imagine a psychologist who studied love, right? He read all of the professional literature about love, looked at all the uh, studies about love, read philosophical treatises about love, you know, had all of this conceptual knowledge of love, but never had a loving relationship, right? right. How much does that psychologist really know about love, right? right. You know? so, so that's why the experiential aspects of this are so important. And when I train psychologists and licensed mental health counselors and, and social workers and so forth in this, my primary focus is on the human formation of the clinician. It's really about the clinician knowing oneself, loving oneself, and you know, tuning the instrument to being able to love their clients in yeah. the most ordered way. So this is the kind of thing that we do in the ITC. This is the kind of thing that we do in the resilient Catholics community. It's the kind of things that we do in the podcast. I'm going to invite folks to not do this while you're driving, okay, or <laughs> operating heavy machinery. You really do need to have a little place to kind of carve out for this. And also, I'm going to invite folks to only do and only take what seems helpful to you. You know, if there starts to be warning bells going off or you, you're having a sense that, you know, this isn't really going to be good for you, then I would say, let it go. Let it go. Pay attention to that, okay? Okay. Uh, and if you notice, for example, that you are becoming hyper aroused, right? Leaving your window of tolerance to the upside, going into a fight or flight type of response. I don't expect this is going to happen um, for folks, but you know, if it does, we want to be aware of it. Then we're going to, I'm going to invite you to shut it off, reground, you know, not, not continue with it, at least not uh, in that way, not on your own. Might be something to bring your therapist if that happens. Or if you've noticed that you're shutting down or numbing out, then also that's hypoarousal. That's a sort of freeze response, right? Where you should shut down. And then again, stop, you know, because it's not, it's actually not being helpful to you. Now that's not going to happen in the vast majority of cases. We just want to have some warnings there. So take again, what's helpful to you. I'm going to invite folks and you too, Greg, to 
go back to a time that was, I'm going to describe this as gray or dark in your life. Okay. Not the darkest, most horrible moment. We don't want to go into a trauma, you know, type of situation, but a time that was dark, that was gray, that was, you know, that was difficult where things were not going well inside in some way. And I'm going to invite you to just kind of reconnect with that moment and notice what's going on in your body you know, what kind of body sensations you have that are associated with that moment. And again, if this is too intense, we're going to just ask, we're going to just ask inside to dial that back just so that it's okay to, to be able to come in contact with it, but not be overwhelmed by it. Just notice what happens in the body. Notice where the emotions are, what you're feeling emotionally at this time. Notice what the thoughts are. What were you saying about yourself? What were you saying to yourself? How were you describing yourself when you're in this difficult moment, in this gray, dreary, dark place? You know, what, what maybe memories were coming up? Know, what desires were coming up. And again, just accepting that that's where you were at at that moment, not endorsing it, but just acknowledging that, yeah, that was real in that moment. You know, we're not, I know, we're not saying that this is the positions we hold, but this is what we were experiencing at that time. And in that moment, I'm going to invite you to open up the whole idea of how you were looking at God. Were you really believing, you know, or sensing in a felt way that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not? And he leadeth me in verdant pastures. Or were you looking at God in some other way? As distant, cold, angry, self-absorbed, condemning. You know, when we get caught up in that dark place, we're often blended with a part. A part has taken over. A part with a limited vision. A part with distorted understanding. A part that's wounded. A part that's desperately trying to make sense of its experience and is also trying to help us, but that has got this limited vision. So what does that part want to tell you about what it thinks about God? Can you be okay and just listen to that part? Can you have the space to just love you in that moment, in that part? What does that part of you need from you? You know, and it's really important not to argue with the part. You know, if we're tempted that way, or if we have an impulse that way, that's another part of us. You know, maybe that's the protector that wants to get rid of that part, right? But I'm going to invite you, if it's possible, and it may not be, and if it's not, that's okay. We can work with this in different ways. But if you can be with that part of you, you 
What a powerful thing to be with. Because this part is also you. It's not all of you, but it's still you. Can we love all of ourselves? Or what gets in the way of loving this part right now? If there's something that gets in the way, let's notice that. Big open heart. And I really invite you to let those graces come down through you, through that core of you, to that part. And again, for some of you, that may be really intuitive. And for others, it's not. You know, there may be things getting in the way. And then that's interesting too. So I'm just going to invite you to be grateful for whatever access you had to yourself, whatever connection you were able to make with your parts. This is just a little taste of what parts work is like. And I'm going to invite you to gradually just come back to the present moment with a lot of gratitude for the parts. Let those parts know that it was good to meet them. If indeed you feel that way, you don't want to be obviously misrepresenting yourself. You might be blended with a part that doesn't feel that way. <laughs> so, and you know, that's just a little bit of what it's like to be able to be working uh, in this way. So, so I, I'm curious, Greg, I'm curious, like what, <laughs> what was, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, right? I'm sure you've got your audience <laughs> that's wondering, all right, I said, you know, I had something happen to me. I, I wonder what happened to Dr. Bizarro, you know? So. <laughs> yes, definitely. Oh man, that was great. Thank you. First of all, thank you for that. Um, that was awesome. And it was really interesting. You know, I do some of this parts work on myself, but it's, it's a very, it's a strikingly different experience having it led <laughs> by somebody else. And then just, just entering in. Interestingly, I, I thought of a time I was I probably just because I was recently talking about this on a past episode here, but when I was in my discernment and I was going through, I was with the Franciscan friars and uh, I was discerning leaving. And there was a good six months that I talk about how, how terribly, terrifyingly miserable I was. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you first said to bring up the dark, dark time, the, <laughs> that was, that was uh, what came right up. Yeah. And I entered into that space and, and my sense of God was absent. And it's as if a, a, a part of me was saying, he's not, he's not here for you. Figure it out mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to figure it out yourself. And the terror was coming from just the gravity of vocational discernment. And like, this is a really big decision. And here I am left to myself to make it abandoned and alone and making this decision. And this is really powerful. This is the first time I ever had this sense in, in, in doing some of this work. I showed up for myself, out from myself for this part as a big brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it was really striking because I've never, I've never had that perspective before. And I'm the oldest. I have, I have younger brothers. So, you know, part of me is, knows really well how to be a big brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But part of me, that part of me never had a big brother. That's right. That's right. And so to go back into that space and, and just be present with myself, it was like having a companion, having a big brother. Like I could be, I could show up for myself in that way. Right. And as the big brother, I was, I was reassuring that part that was terrified and alone. He'll come. He'll mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. and, and in his time, you just have to be patient. 
Mm-hmm. And there is a really deep sense of, of companionship and friendship. And, and it was like, it's going to be okay. Cause we're, we're waiting here together in that space of time that I needed to go through, you know, before it became very clear what my vocation was. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, see, you were able to love you in that part, right? That that's really beautiful. And that's, where a lot of healing comes because even if let's say you were in therapy, right. And a therapist was able to access that part, right. And a therapist loved that part. Yeah. That part still needs you, Greg, that part needs you more than needs a therapist. Mm. That's really hard for, I think for people to understand and accept. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Well, it takes a lot of humility to, to do this work because, you know, the saints talk about, you know, what saint ever says, yes, it's true. I've reached the pinnacle of human functioning. I, I, I do better than, than most other mortals. You know, this is, <laughs> this is I, I thank God, you know, for the, for the perfection he's created within me, right? Saints don't talk like that. Saints talk about how wretched they are. They talk about how 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 much their how much disorder there is, right? And it's not that there's more disorder in them than there is in us. It's that they're in touch with it. Mm. They actually are accessing this, you know, and they're aware. We're sort of we often skitter along the surface, right? We don't we don't want to go we don't want to go down there, you know. We don't that's where angels fear the tread. We think, right? You know. So, um, but but it, but in a in this way, it makes it possible. Like there's a, a language and a model that facilitates that on the natural level, and then when you start bringing in, you know, the knowledge of God, right, and all the the anthropological aspects that undergird, you know, practicing this from a Catholic perspective. And, and you bring in the relating with God. It's a whole different ball game. Right. So I, you know, I, I actually, I had a retreat. I did a retreat once where I did some very deep dive into some parts work and at my own personal time. And I had the most, one of the most disturbing experiences in this space. And I, enc- I encountered a part of myself that I hated and I absolutely wanted to destroy and hate. And it's just, and it's something that I was so fed up with. And it had to do with my perfectionism and my irritation at imperfection and all these things. <laughs> and I, I was like so fed up with myself. <laughs> I remember coming home and I was thinking, like, all right, I'm supposed to love myself, but like, <laughs> I just don't think I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, and I got home to the dinner table. And I was with my kids and I washed, I, I, I had this grace wash over me that was so deep and so pure and so effective. And I saw my children and I realized as a dad, I could never not love my kids. And then it clicked for me, like immediately I was like, <laughs> that's how I'm supposed to love myself. That's my cue. Like God loves me the way I love my kids infinitely better than the way I love my kids. So if I'm supposed to love myself in, in an image of him loving me and and modeling and mirroring off of that, like that's my goal. Then of course this should be possible. I can love even that part of myself that I find so disgusting. Right. And I want to tear it out, but like, that's part of me. Right. Right. It's part of you. And we need that connection, that justification. I think otherwise it's just like, I don't know. We're like so repressed against (laughs) accepting mercy at that level. There was no aspect of humanity that our Lord wouldn't come into contact with. Right. So parts, I think the modern day lepers are are parts that we've rejected. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? inside of us, right? And the little children, right? Little children throwing tantrums or little children, you know, with tremendous needs or right. whatever we reject, right? What does our Lord say? Let the little children come to me and do that mm. to them, right? The kingdom of God is made up of such as these. So, you know, there isn't any, any aspect of human experience that our Lord will not come into contact with. There's nothing that he won't accept, you know, blind beggars, um, you know, lame, the blinds, you know, tax collectors, 
sinners of all stripes. None of that is unacceptable to him, right? What he needs is for us to allow ourselves to be loved. That's what he needs, right? And he can't force that from us, right? So our habitual uh, kind of instinct is that we're going to be rejected. And that comes from probably rejections that we've had in the past. You know, I mean, it's not, it's not just made up on a whole cloth, but that actually isn't who our Lord is. This is a huge adventure into not only getting to know ourselves, right? I'm, remem- I'm reminded of Socrates, right? Know thyself, right? Or, you know, it's not just about uh, knowing ourselves. It's about finding out who God really is. That's got to go part and parcel with us knowing who we are. It's both. It's a, it's a, I go back to Augustine almost every episode. I feel like in this podcast, it's, you know, to know myself and to know you, O oh Lord. Yeah. And that's really the whole purpose. That's the whole point of everything. And, you know, and so this is, this is an opportunity. It's a way that makes that so much less threatening. You know, I remember figuring out for the first time when I was on my level one IFS training that I've been blended practically my whole life. Mm. You know, I mean, I was, it was astonishing to figure that out. And there's reasons for that. There's reasons for that. There's this like real beauty and gentleness and, and also like groundedness in working in this way. So, so yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm passionate about bringing that to folks. Super excited to have been able to bring a little taste of this to your audience, you know, to, to the people that, you know, have come to, 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 to follow you on this, on this podcast on being human. I mean, I, I, I'm super, super excited about it. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's so powerful. And I think too, it connects the dots and opens up channels of following Christ. Like it's not supposed to be that hard, (laughs) you know, like his way is easy. It's supposed to be his burden is, is easy. And, and it's not, we make it so much harder on ourselves You know, I was just thinking about this, like, I I still have this temptation to go back to that same place, that same part still is is alive and well in me Mm -hmm. of, of, you know, doubting God's presence, and like, he's not going to tell me what to do next. And he's not here with me and this stuff. But it's another part that sort of slams that part and says, like, you're supposed to trust God, don't you know anything like, Right. right. But to go back in that space with compassion as a brother to myself and to be accompanying that part with companionship, it becomes very clear how much easier it is to actually trust and abandon to divine providence and have peace in the waiting, in the space, in the dark place because of that acceptance of that part first. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute, it actually is pretty easy it gets so much easier and this is a big point that father jacques philippe makes in his book um uh what is it uh seeking peace or something i can't remember what it's called but um it's his book searching for and maintaining peace peace. yeah he talks he emphasizes the the importance of peace of heart and when you look at how he's defining peace of heart so much of that is in the natural realm right? Like, yes, it, it, it's so much in the natural realm. And so, you know, to be able to have that creates a foundation that is so much more solid and stable for the building of the spiritual life, right? Because again, grace perfects nature. And this is what we've missed, I think, Greg, is this whole aspect of human formation, Yes, we've just started to wake up to it. Uh, I think somewhat cynically, I suppose, in response to the whole sex abuse crisis in the seminaries. Seminaries right. are now talking a lot about human formation, right? They're recognizing that that's really something that's been neglected. We really need to focus on this, but there's not even within our uh, within our church a good definition of human formation, right? Uh, so, so that's really what I see these approaches IFS. And so what I see human souls and hearts, soulsandhearts.com. That's our online, that's our online outreach. It's all about human formation. It's not just about information. It's not about the catechism. It's not about apologetics. It's about forming ourselves in the natural realm so that from that order in the natural realm and from that development in the natural realm, we can be better equipped to receive the graces and to develop spiritually. 
So that's like the prerequisite. That's why St. John the Baptist is our patron, right? Because he prepared the way for the Lord. Right, and exactly. That, based you know, on the so, natural. Yes, based on the natural. And so baptizing with water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that's what this is all. This is that's what this is all about. So if, if this like really resonates with with folks, and it's been great to have you in the ITC, Greg, and get to know you. Uh, you know, I followed your work from afar for a number of years now. And we've run across each other at the Catholic Psychotherapy Associated and stuff like that. But it's been yeah. great to like um to 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 be here with you. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity to to be here. I'm really also thankful to you and to your parts uh, for the, for being willing to share with us, like what your experience was in that exercise. That's, that's, that was a gift. And I, and I'm really grateful for that. I think it's really, well, you're, you're very welcome. And you definitely, <laughs> uh, gratitude is mutual. And I, I really appreciate so. the space you opened with that. And, and it is, it's a blessing to, to work with you and to have you trailblazing in your own way. And, and it's been awesome. Yeah. Just, I, I think the first time I, I came across work was back with the assessments and, and looking at the roar shock and everything else. And I think, I think we're both on a journey here and discovering new ways of understanding our humanity in light of God's yeah. creation. So it's as always a, a blessing and a pleasure to, to connect with you here. And I definitely, all my people listening right now, soulsandhearts.com definitely go there. Uh, the, the, um, actually, why don't you go through the list of, of where, where people can find you and what to do? So, so yeah, interior integration for Catholics is the podcast that I do. And that is on all the major podcast platforms. So Spotify, Apple podcasts, all check that out. Um, and then souls and hearts is a big outreach. We've got blogs, we've got free courses. We've got a Catholic's guide to finding a therapist. That's a free course, Catholic's guide to self-help Catholic's guide to uh, a loving to helping a loved one in distress. Dr. Jerry Crete has a podcast called be with the word where he oh, takes he's so a, good. He takes a psychological perspective on the Sunday mass readings. Uh, so he's got good. a, he's got a new community called Catholic journeyman, which is all about men journeying together. And there's some special needs that men have, and they are, they have just launched. And so that's really exciting. And you can check that out. All of that stuff's at soulsandhearts.com. The other thing that I want to let people know real quick is that we have a directory call, and that's at soulsandhearts.com backslash T-O-C for table of contents, where we've got all of our stuff divided out by topic headings. So it goes from addictions to vocational discernment. We don't quite go from A to Z, but we go from A to Z. Because <laughs> uh, that, which we're bringing up about vocational discernment, that is so huge for so many people. It is oh, yeah. such a struggle for so many people. So we've got we've got all kinds of all kinds of resources there um, in the communities. Uh, the ITC, if you're a Catholic therapist, you might want to take a look at that if you're interested in this IFS type of approaches. And then the Resilient Catholics community as well. That's going to reopen in December. Uh, we're open only during June and December to new members. We just closed that so we can have a chance to really do that human formation work without new people coming in all the time. So all those resources, most of those resources are free, but we never turn anybody away from any of our paid resources um, <laughs> for, for, for want of money, right? We, we, we take people in if, you know, we work with people, there's something that- No, it's really, really good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's all it's, uh, solid. It's all yeah. worth it. It's worth yeah. the time. It's worth the money. It's worth, this. Is, there's no better way to invest your resources. These are the, the paths to becoming the best version of yourself. And, you know, people get uncomfortable when I talk about this, like we have to pay for resources to become saints <laughs> and people are like, why are you saying that in spiritual? Like you're not paying for God's part, right? You're paying right. for the human formation part. Right. And it, like, this takes time. It takes right. money of our own investment in ourselves yep. and our education yep. and building and the out these resources. And the labor, is worth his, the labor is worth his wage. And remember, Greg, I'm a psychologist, you know, I'm not a priest, right? I'm working <laughs> right. in the national realm, right? <laughs> So, I, you know, just like your dentist works in the natural realm, right? right. But few Catholics would go to their dentist and say, uh, this should be free, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. You know? It's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, so we do, we do need that in order to be able to keep the lights on, you know, there's expenses. But, yeah, absolutely. But, 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 but yeah, we don't want anything, I don't want anything to get in the way of people accessing resources that would help them. So we do also have scholarships and stuff like that for folks that are in, in need. It's awesome. I'm so excited to see what else God has planned and to watch what you're doing unfold, to, to watch what we're doing unfold and the continual integration and collaborations and all sorts of things. I think, I think the blessings of everything we've just been through, I mean, really the whole 20th century right. 
has been a crucible in so many ways. And now just this outpouring of grace, tremendous resources. I think God is really blessing us in so many ways. So I appreciate you and your time and your sharing of your gifts and your talents. And, uh, and you'll be in my prayers and please Thank keep you. me in yours. I, I definitely will, Greg. And it's, it's great to, it's great to be with you. And, and we should, you know, we should talk about doing this again sometime. I think it'd be I, I, will, I can't wait for the next one. I'm going to get my parts ready and, and we're going to be prepared. All right. <laughs> well, you let deep. me know. You let me know. So, all right. Sounds God good. Yeah. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Being Human podcast. If you want more free content and information about what we do at the Catholic Psych Institute, head on over to catholicpsych.com. God bless you.